everybody, it's Lori with Reiki and Wellness, broadcasting from my healing space tonight for Wellness Wednesday. And tonight's topic I want to discuss is um, relationships and karmic versus soul relationships or soul family relationships. And um, there are two types of karmic relationships, positive and negative karmic relationships, and there's soul family and soul mate relationships. So thought we would kind of get into that and um, also do a Reiki around transforming and transmuting um, negative karmic relationships. So first we want to start with a Reiki cleansing technique and I'd like to use jasmine oil and lavender oil as a combination. And when you use the oils or you smudge or you sage or you... Um, spray something it cleans and clears your auric field so we're just going to douse our hands with the oil you can use this in a spray if you want to and you just want to kind of comb your energy field your energy field runs about three inches above your body and it can be larger than that but try to get like three inches above your body to make contact with their energy field. And I always like to get my knees and my feet for grounding. Also, if you um, smudge or sage, you can smudge and sage underneath your feet. It's just good to clear, clean and clear off ener any energy from your energy centers. We want to comb and clear our auric field. Get your knees, spike your arms. Okay, and now let's warm our hands up and get some Reiki energy generated. To take it above our head and start by opening our crown chakra. And when the energy center is ready to open, it'll push your hands away from you. So the more you do this, the more comfortable you get at sensing energy, and then you'll notice when it's pushing your hand away. Open up your third eye, which is your psychic eye. This is also how you receive intuition, or one of the ways you receive an intuition. Take it down the front of your face, go to your throat chakra, the heart chakra. Take it down to your solar plexus, it's right below your heart chakra, like around the beginning of your rib cage. And then your sacral chakra is right below that. And then your root chakra is kind of close to where you're sitting. So <laughs> you want to reach it however you can. And then take it to your knees. Now we've opened some chakras and we're going to call in divine light. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine light is doing its perfect work in and through us now. And of course I like to layer in energy so we can also call on the universal life force energy, which is what Reiki tunes into. We typically use that in a Reiki treatment. So calling in universal life force energy to cleanse and clear any imbalances in our energy field today. You can breathe it out. You can shift as you call it in. Let it kind of work its way through your energy field. See if you can actually feel it moving through you. And then, of course, divine love. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through us now. Okay, 
So we're called in all the good energy to sustain and support us as we talk. And we're also going to do some Reiki exercises to move energy and to send um, good energy to some relationships, um, karmic relationships specifically. Um, so the topic tonight is coming up because I think a lot of us as we advance on our soul path and we grow and we awaken and we shift and we change, we are meeting more people who are from a soul family. And you, the way you can tell if somebody's part of your soul family is how they feel when you're around them or if you share a similar mission or purpose, right? So soul family can... Um, you can have family, soul family in your family that you're born into, or they can simply just be a friend or a coworker or somebody that you meet along your journey. So they can show up in any kind of system. Um, a lot of us didn't get a lot of soul family members um, when we were born. We've had to kind of <laughs> seek them out or they become a friend to us or something along the path. Um, a lot of family relationships are actually karmic relationships. And the karmic relationship stems from a reincarnation or a past life. So I don't know how you feel about past lives and reincarnation, but it, it does show up in energy work. Like when I'm doing energy work on somebody, I'll tune into um, the energy field intuitively and I will pick up on things that seem like pretty ancient or pretty old and it seems like it's coming from a past life or a previous lifetime. Um, sometimes things can come in from the future too. So <laughs> energy is everywhere and it doesn't really pay attention to time or space. So energy can go anywhere at any time and it can traverse time and space. So energy is very fluid. Um, but karmic relationships are based in a past life connection that either um, somebody owes you something because they did something bad to you. So they owe you some uh, like a karmic debt or you owe them a karmic debt, right? So you might have not mistreated somebody and you owe them something or they mistreated you and they now owe you something so the karmic relationship is coming into existence just to create a balance so the idea is we are to balance our relationships with other people and especially if it's a karmic relationship right so if um, you get triggered by somebody and, you know, you feel something like really strong about that person, likely it's a karmic relationship. You can feel strongly about soul connections and soul family too, but it's like a more pleasant <laughs> uh, experience. Uh, soul family and soul connections feel good to be around, right? So um, I guess the difference at least in my experience that I notice is like soul family, you just feel so good around each other and you just get each other and you understand each other without putting a lot of effort into it. They're just easy to be around. You connect very easily. You guys have similar ideas and ideals and maybe even similar missions or similar, um, you know, callings, your soul callings, you know, so they're, they're like, like a support system on the path for you, typically. Um, karmic relationships are in your life to balance karma. So, um, and it can take a whole lifetime to balance karma, depending on what happened in a previous lifetime and what happened um, between you. So um, they're definitely not as light and breezy of a relationship. However, you can come into alignment with somebody who just owes you some good karma and they're just there to like help you out for a minute or a period of time and then they kind of uh, go on another journey, right? So you can balance karma not in a, a long-term relationship or not, you know, in a heavy way. So somebody can just owe you and their whole purpose is to come into this lifetime to pay off some karma and they do it in a nice way and it doesn't feel bad it feels good um but the you know the intention was to pay off the karma between you right um so whenever we're having like difficult relationships and 
a heavy energy in a relationship, there's definitely probably some karma there that we're working out. And then a lot of other relationships that don't feel like they feel neutral, they probably are neutral, right? So not everything has a charge to it, um, an energetic charge to it. So um, just kind of understanding like there's good karma, there's bad karma, um, but the idea is to come into balance, right? So we're here to balance karma and we're here to further our soul's evolution and um, growth and I believe expand into the field of love and light further and further. And the way you can do that most quickly is to balance the karma as fast as possible. So Jesus taught this though. He taught that you use forgiveness to balance karma. And and to let it go, right? And Buddhism teaches this too. Like, don't let people hook you. Don't hold on to anger. Don't hold on to resentment. Like, process it and work through it as fast as you can because you don't want the karma that gets attached to holding somebody accountable for something they've done to harm you or in your, you know, just holding on to the anger and holding on to the resentment means you will be back with that person again to work it out again if you don't figure it out now. So um, a lot of us in the spiritual community and walking the spiritual path are afraid of generating negative karma, right? So a lot of us like work really hard at processing the karma and healing the karma, balancing the karma, and we also don't want to like reignite new karma, new negative karma. I also feel like when you're out doing good things in the world, you're generating positive karma and that can come back to you in a good way. So that's okay, right? It's like putting money in the bank, right? Someday you're going to cash in on some of that money, but for now you're just stowing it away in the bank and you get to use it at a later date. Negative karma is kind of the same way. Like it gets stored in the bank too, but it'll come back to you in a negative way. So um, depending on where you're at in your process, you do want to be careful. And hopefully if you're watching this video, it's, you know, making you think a little bit. The longer you um, are engaging with people on a negative level, the more karma you're creating between you and them. And that's something we want to neutralize as soon as possible and as fast as possible. And if you can turn that car bad karma into good karma, that's even better, right? So to transform the karma, transform the karmic energy, that is really the goal of all the relationships, I think, between all people. Um, at least don't sow new negative karma. So you want to neutralize or, and that's what an apology is good for. That's what forgiveness is good for. You know, if if you do catch yourself doing something or saying something or thinking something negative towards somebody, you want to neutralize it as fast as you can. So you don't want to keep sowing, you know, negative karma. And, and the way it can come back to you is just you feeling negative, right? You feeling hateful, you storing that in your heart space and, and holding on to it. And then that will hold you hostage and start to make you sick and make you like a really crabby um, grumpy person, it, you know, it can just like be coming back on you because you're holding on to it. So it doesn't necessarily even go back out into the world. Sometimes it just goes right back inside of us and stays inside of us. So, um, tonight I'd like to work on some Reiki techniques of just kind of neutralizing karma and, um, rebalancing karma between other you and someone else and I found that some of the best ways we can do that there's um, like a technique say that says to send people love and light right so I feel like that's something you have to really kind of like dig into though especially if you're having a hard time with someone right so the love and light that you're sending you want to send is in a pure space if you can a pure heart space so um the term namaste means the good in me sees the good in you and um you know in india they say namaste a lot and they 
it means that the good part of you, the part that sees, you know, from the perspective of the spiritual perspective or the God perspective, sees that, that the good in someone else, their God self, their spiritual self, their soul. So you want to kind of work from that perspective before you start sending love and light because you want to get into that space where you're not, you know, going tit for tat with somebody and not holding them um, in a negative heart space, right? So you want to purify your own heart space enough before you start working in the love and the light and sending that to someone else. So when I'm uh, showing you guys Reiki techniques, I really work on you learning how to do it for yourself because you want to purify your own vessel before you start like sending out energy to other people because you can get into this like little ricochet um, energy where things start bouncing around if you're not coming from a pure place. So the way to come from a pure place is to just purify your heart and, you know, if you have to pray about it, but just um, sit with that person in your heart space. And so for tonight, I want to picture somebody that we're having a hard time with or we're judging or we're, you know, sometimes we're just seeing so much of their issues coming up in them that we're judging them for it. So anything like that, that we're having a hard time letting go of about someone else or maybe they did something to us and we're still holding on to the hurt and the pain. We want to take a breath and just kind of center and cleanse and clear our own heart space. So let's go ahead and work with our own heart space right now. Let it out. So before you start to visualize this person, you just want to put yourself in a good space. So send yourself some sun, some light, some love. And if it's you who you hold hostage and who you, you know, have negative energy with, cleanse and clear your own heart space and neutralize the energy towards yourself too because our relationship to ourselves gets reflected out into the world. So if we're not um, creating a good relationship with ourselves, then we're going to reflect that into all our outer relationships. So we want to get right with ourselves, um, you know, as early as we can. So just go ahead and imagine some sunlight coming in, some light coming in. Invite your angels, your spirit guides, your higher self, any ascended masters, any teachers that you, um, you know, turn towards. Call them in and ask for them to purify your heart space. And this is a practice. This is something we can do every day or every minute of the day until we feel in alignment. So we're working in our heart space and we're going to imagine somebody who we still have probably some negative karma with or we might be creating negative karma based on how we're judging them or seeing them in this moment or you know, whatever it is. So just kind of imagine that person and bring them, invite them into your heart space right now. Okay, so as I'm visualizing this, this one person turned into like a few people. So sometimes people, like one person becomes the scapegoat for all the other people who have similar energy. So that's what just happened to me. So I just saw like the one person turn into a few different people. So just start allowing that to come in and see what happens. Now you just want to say the good in me sees the good in you. May light and love be with you today and always. The good in me sees the good in you. May light and love be with you today and always. The good in me sees the good in you. 
May light and love be with you today and always. And just kind of see the light like coming around them and imbuing them right now. And if they turned into three or more people, <laughs> all three of them, just invite this light to come in and surround them. Now use your heart space to push the love toward your the love that you built up inside of your heart and push that towards them. And see the love like penetrating this light bubble. And just send them love. Now, if you can see the light bubble, like surrounding both of you, right? So include yourself in this space and bring all the love back through the energy and ground it to the earth. So send the light back down through the earth surrounding both of you or all of you, whoever it is. Okay. So as often as you need to do this until the energy shifts and until you don't feel triggered by the memory of them or the memory of the instance or the, the karma or whatever it is, just continue working on this with each and every person as they come up in your heart space because sometimes the, what's coming up in our heart space is there to heal, right? And when one person turns into more people, that means it's a bigger issue and there's more karma and there's more intensity behind it so you really want to just kind of like neutralize it as fast as you can and you can do that through working with your heart space and working with light and working with love and so we're just going to go ahead and wrap ourselves up now retain all this good energy and the idea is to turn all the karmic relationships into soul relationships eventually. So we want to transform and transmute the karmic relationships, the negative karmic relationships, but um, or any karmic. And we want to transform and transmute it into pure love and pure like soul connections between people. And ultimately, we are a small fragment of the larger soul, which is considered God or the larger source. So really, in truth, we are just aspects of God, but we have issues that we have to work through to get that understanding and, and to bring that understanding, anchor it back into our identity and our personalities and our bodies in our energy fields and into our souls. So we're, we're processing and transforming ourselves every day, all the time. So the more we can concentrate on doing this, the better. And the more we can, it will help us move through karmic relationships more quickly. And we will, you know, obviously just feel better and feel brighter and feel lighter. And we won't have as much negative charge between ourselves and someone else. Okay, so that's it for Wellness Wednesday tonight. Thank you for joining me. If you're enjoying this content, please do like and subscribe, and I'll see you next week. Take care.